Good morning. Please remain seated, but I will ask you to respond verbally to our call of worship this morning. Come, let us bow before the Holy One. Come, let us confess God's mind. Come, let us feel God's mercy. Come, let us live in God's life. As God's people, we come to worship and praise. Glory to God, let our worship begin. Let us now bow our heads as we join our hearts in prayer. Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, how shall we do your will today? Will it be an act of praise and gifts shared and prayers lifted? Who will you lead us to serve? Help us trust you. Help us listen. Bless this community as we come together in worship. Encourage us, comfort us, unite us, and make our joy complete. Amen. Every week as we worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God, that we do not always live as we are called to live. In this time of confession, let us remember that God is merciful and just, eager to offer grace and love. Let us pray, first in silence. Please join me in unison in prayer of confession for many of your folks. God of patience, your people grow weary. We can blame and question. We put you to the test. We can wander off your path. Gently call us back to you. Thank you our hearts of pride. Thank you our souls of selfishness. Thank you our minds of envy, doubt, and mistrust. We truly cannot come together, we cannot gather as people of God without in some way sharing the peace of Christ with one another. So I ask that you now turn your pews and smile and wave to all that you can see, greeting them in the name of Christ. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, 
The tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and harlots believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kyle. Oh, was everybody able to hear Kyle? <laughs> okay, I like that. It, it forceful uh, uh, liturgist on, on Sunday morning. Okay, uh, I'm sort of waiting for a train to pass there. <laughs> Authority issues. Our scripture this morning, basically, they were asking Jesus, why, what authority do you do these things? And, you know, it seems like the, the Pharisees and most of the religious leaders had some authority issues, if you will, uh, at this particular time. I would imagine that all of us have run into people who have authority issues. Uh, someone who refuses to acknowledge who is actually the boss in whatever situation uh, you may be in. Uh, authority, or at least recognizing authority, is definitely the theme that, that runs through the scripture passage that Kyle read for us this morning. The chief priests and the elders take issue with Jesus' authority, and then the two sons and the parable that Jesus offered. One of them says, uh, yeah, I'll do that, but then he doesn't. And the other one says, no, I'm not going to do it. But then he does end up doing it. So both of them, in their own way, sort of challenge their father's authority. Uh, well, you know, those two, and the chief priests and the Pharisees, are not the only ones that have authority issues. At times, all of us have authority issues. All of you and I, we have authority issues. And, and in our usual understanding of authority issues, the, the obvious question in today's gospel is, well, do we recognize and admit to the authority of Jesus and to the authority of God the Father? But that question, however, seems to be so obvious to us as Christians that I have to wonder if maybe that's not really the question that we need to be asking when we're thinking about this Scripture. So, the question that I came up with as I'm dealing with this scripture and thinking about it yeah, really recalls back to my childhood when I can remember telling people, hey, you're not the boss of me. Uh, the question is, who is the boss of you? Shall we pray? Gracious God, May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. More often than not, I think a lot of us get confused about authority. We misunderstand authority to be based on credentials and expertise on some kind of thick resume or years of education or successes and accomplishments, status, recognition, or the position held in relationship to someone else. We assume that authority comes from outside a person and that it's given to them by the circumstances they may be in at that particular time. And this understanding, that means some people have authority, but most of the other people don't really have authority, or they have little authority in their lives. In this passage, and many times in life, people will say, who do you think you are? What gives you the right to tell me what to do? Now, Logan, you've never said anything like that, no. But, but a lot of us have. No, yeah. uh, and in my time, you know, like I said when I was growing up, the phrase was, you're not the boss of me. You know. Oh, oh you, you still use that today? Oh, that's still around? Oh, okay. 
okay, well, uh, we'll see. If you have, you can use it now. Feel free. You know, what is going on up there. And that does represent our usual understanding of authority issue. We don't like someone else correcting us or telling us what to do. You know, and we hear that in the challenge of the chief priests and elders to Jesus. They say almost exactly the same things. They don't use the boss terminology. But they say, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you that authority? And we see it in the refusal of the two sons to go to the vineyard. There is, however, I believe, another authority issue at play in today's gospel. That issue is our failure as human beings to sometimes refuse to recognize or to claim or to exercise the authority that we have within us. The authority to go to God's vineyard and do what God has asked us to do. That's the authority issue that I believe the gospel is holding here before us today. If you think that God is the boss of you, you're wrong. God is not the boss of you. God is not the boss of me. God is not the boss of us. Rather, God is the author of each of us. It is God who authorizes us to enter into God's vineyard, if you will, God's world, to act in this world with God's authority and on God's behalf through the gifts that God has bestowed upon each one of us, upon you and upon me. True authority always comes from within. It is an interior God-given quality, not some exterior circumstance. That's what the chief priests and elders failed to understand in this passage. And I think that's why Jesus was always so aggravated with the religious leaders of his time. They chose to exchange their God-given authority for some kind of human power. And I'm afraid sometimes we do that as well. And I think that's what's happening in much of our world today. Because in the absence of authority, there will always be power struggles. Look at the gridlock in our political system today. Look at the wars that continue to wage throughout the world. Even look at the conflicts that you may have in your own relationships with other people. Those are almost always about power, not about authority. Our leaders try to exercise power but it's a very rare leader that really exercises authority. Because in the exercise of power, we look to our own interests. But in the exercise of authority, we look to the interests of others. Think about the people who hold authority for you in your life. People that are important to you, people that you listen to, people that you go to for guidance and for understanding, they're not usually concerned about themselves. They're not trying to dominate you or control you or hold power over you. If they have authority for you, they are inspiring you. They call forth from you faith and hope and trust. They are those who expand your world, who open you up to new possibilities and bring forth life and gifts in yourself that you never knew were there. They cause you to reevaluate your life, to change your mind sometimes, to live differently. And you know, my friends, that sounds an awful lot like Jesus. And it's very different from those who simply try to wield power in this world. I will always... Uh, remember and give thanks for the authority that my own dad had in my life. Almost seven years ago, I went to my dad's funeral believing 
that perhaps besides my mother, that I was the most important person in my dad's life. When I got there and interacted with the people at that funeral, that celebration of life, I realized that half the people there thought the same thing about themselves. And that was not manipulation on my dad's part. It was his authority, his ability to really listen, his presence for people, and his wisdom. Those were not just his personality traits. They were the divine attribution in his life, gifts that God had bestowed upon him. And those gifts, as he utilized them with me, and with all other people that he met, those gifts created space and place for me and for others that he came into contact with that invited us to discover our own authority, that showed us the way to the vineyard in our lives, the way we should be acting and treating other people in our lives. There are people in this congregation who may have presently held no leadership position or title or even any theological credentials, and yet they have great authority. People I remember since my time here, Lorraine Stang, Norma Rutler, Gus Garland, even Gene Henson, were all such people. And I don't want to embarrass anyone still here by naming names, but I see it in other people in this congregation as well. I can feel it in your compassion and your gentleness. I hear it in the way that you pray. And I can feel it in your love for me and for all others. You too, just as Lorraine and Norma and Gus and Jean did, you show me the way to God's vineyard, the vineyard of my life, the way that I need to be going. And that's what authorities do. It's not about them. It's about the other people in their lives. All authority does originate in God, but it's not exclusive to God. God shares God's authority with us. And the authority that God shares is nothing less than God's own divine attributes shared with us. It is the manifestation of God's life in and through our own lives. That shared authority exists in each of us and is revealed by us as the many and varied abilities and attributes that we have. The gifts, if you will, that God has imparted on each of our lives. That means every one of us in this room has authority in some way or the other. As your pastor, I don't have more authority than you do. I don't have better authority than you do. I just have a different authority than what you may have because my God-given attributes are different than yours. God gives each of us gifts and abilities unique to ourselves. And you know, our God is generous. God is extravagant with the gifts that God gives and with the authority that God shares with us. We all have God-given gifts, and thus we all have God-given authority. There's no one without authority. There's no one without God-given gifts. The difference is, some is, it, the difference isn't that some have authority and some don't, which is typically the way we think about authority. The difference is that some recognize and exercise their authority, and others do not. Regardless, God knows and God can see the authority that God has given you, and he's waiting for you to use those abilities, those gifts, to express your authority in his kingdom, in this vineyard, if you will. 
So, my friends, I would leave you with these thoughts. What is the authority that God has given to you? What gifts, what divine attributes, if you want to call them that, has God bestowed upon you in your life? And then once you figure some of that out, are you sharing from that authority, are you sharing those gifts with the other people around you? So, who is the boss of you? You are the boss of you. As long as you are using your God-given abilities and talents to the glory of God. You are the boss. Thanks be to God. Amen. You see Marcia's quickly hurrying up so I'll give her a little time to get over there. Because our special music this morning is by our uh, guitar and vocal group again. Marcia, John, and Becky have recorded some music for us. And this morning I believe we're going to hear Down by the River the Church.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, as we come to the end of our service, I remind you that uh, instead of passing the offering plates to collect your tithes and offerings, we have the offering plates available uh, close to the door as you are leaving. If you didn't see them and have an opportunity to present your tithes and offerings at that time, you can note them and drop your offering in on the way out. And once again, we thank you for continuing to support our church and its ministers with your tithes and offerings. So let me offer this uh, blessing of offering, if you will. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and of our lives, that we might make a difference in this world. For all the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, our gracious God, except we pray not just our money, but also our lives, freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might lead us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. My friends, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, the fall season has now begun. Uh, today is supposed to be another warm day before it cools down a little bit. But that cool weather is, is to be appreciated this time of year. If it does cool down a little bit, uh, you don't like that exit here, you want it to stay warm forever. Oh, your mom doesn't like it. Oh, uh, enjoy today, then, Amy, because it's warm today uh, when we go outside. I hope you have a great week, and as the season changes now, we move into not just the fall, but we move into the month of October this week as well. I know that many of you are busy and, and will be going about your lives, and I want to remind you that. Wherever you find yourself, whatever you are doing this week, always remember that God, God is right there with you. Because God, God is always above us, watching over us. God is always below us, holding us up and supporting us in our lives. God always goes behind us to protect us. God always goes before us to guide us and to lead us on our ways. God always stands right beside us to put an arm around us and give us a hug when we need it. And most importantly of all, God is inside us as well to bring us joy and peace. So go in peace this day, my friends. Amen. <laughs>